Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're talking about the brand new Flex 24 volt brushless rear handle, seven and a quarter inch circular saw with stacked lithium batteries. So the question everybody really wants to know is, is this the new king or the fastest circular saw on the market available today? Well, that's exactly what we're here to find out. So you do not want to miss what we have to talk about in this episode. Stick with us. All right, you guys, so this right here is the Flex FX2141R. It's fairly new to market. It's Flex's first uh, uh, four-way or whatnot into a uh, rear handle seven and a quarter inch circular saws. And you can only get it as a kit and it comes with the 10 amp hour stack lithium batteries plus chargers and stuff like that. It doesn't come with the case, but you know, uh, that's what it currently comes with. You can only buy it as a kit. You cannot buy it as a tool only. So like I said, it's probably the newest one on the market right now. So what everybody's really wondering is, can this be faster or cut faster or perform faster than the current king on the market, which is the DeWalt 60 volt max flex volt rear handle circular saw using, you know, higher capacity batteries. I believe we have it tested on the channel up to about nine amp hours, okay? It's really a three amp hour flex volt battery, but you know, that's what we've tested up to so far. So can this flex beat the DeWalt? So let's get into it. So this right here is a Flex FX2141R. It features the Flex Stacked Lithium Advantage. It provides 200% more power with 24 volt lithium. 300% longer battery life with Thermatec heat management, 100% faster charging, and 100% cross compatibility with all Flex 24 uh, tools and chargers. Wow, that's a lot of claims there, right? Let's go over that real quick. 200% more power, 100% faster charging, 300% longer battery life, and 100% compatibility. And compatibility, we're just gonna leave out because you know it's not really battery performance, let's say. Anyways, this has a uh, feature uh, sensor-free brushless motor. Do not get fooled into this. It does have sensors. It is brushless. You, you can't work a brushless motor without sensors. It just means that there are no sensors built into the brushless motors, but somewhere around it, okay? So marketing height. Uh, up to 2,500 watts of power. It's allegedly the most powerful cordless uh, rear handle circular saw on the market. Whether it's the fastest, we're here to find out. It has exceptional runtime up to 720 cuts in 2x4 lumber with the stacked 10 amp hour uh, battery. It has ultimate performance cutting up to 6,200 RPMs for faster cutting. And it has a magnesium foot plate and guards. It has maximum cutting capacity, whatever they mean by that. And it's cross compatible with all the 24 volt stuff, right? In their flex lineup. So let's go over some of those specs again, real quick. Saw blade, seven and a quarter inch, a no low speed, 6200, bevel capacity up to 56 degrees. The arbor is a standard five eighths inch arbor. It does not use a diamond arbor, uh, keep that in mind. At 90 degrees, you can cut up to two and five eighths. And at 45 degrees, you can cut at one and seven eighths. The weight of the tool without the battery, they say weighs in right around 11 pounds. And of course, if you buy the tool and register it before December 31st, 2022, you get the Flex Founders Lifetime a Limited Warranty that pretty much protects everything you buy um, from Flex, you know, pretty much for the lifetime of the tool if you do get it registered within 30 days of purchasing before December 31st, 2022. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the tool real quick. We're not gonna go into super detail about everything, but we are gonna go over and touch uh, bit, bit parts over the tool mainly because this video is about the tool and its performance, right? So this base plate here is magnesium. This middle part here, they say it's magnesium. It's, it had, it's more of a rougher finish than this smooth finished magnesium, but it does say that right there. Standard of uh, uh, blade guard here, this part right here is plastic. It's interesting because this part here is metal and this part here is metal, but this blade guard, uh, lever here is uh, plastic. Like I said earlier, this is a 5 8 inch arbor. And as you would on rear handle circular saws, you know, it's almost reverse threaded. Um, other than that, all that stuff is really here is going on on this side, which is the left hand part of the tool if you are holding the tool with your right hand, okay? Um, the other thing to point out here is this right here is the depth lever adjustment. Um, as you can see here, some people seem to get really confused on how to use this or whatnot, but you know, you wanna level up or match up where you want this round nut to be or this uh, circular cap nut to be when you are cutting, right? So it generally works pretty well, right? I generally 
don't do not use that. I just put the material there and just, you know, just let it sit there and then lock it. That's probably the best way to get the most accurate, but that's just me, you know. I mean, but it is there. It does work pretty smoothly, okay? So that's what's going on that side. On the back side right here, or on this uh, rear part right here, obviously this is the handle. It feels pretty much exactly like a flex tool. If you've used flex tools before holding it, you're going to know with this, you know, uh, neuralized pattern rubber here you're going to feel that this is definitely a flex tool ambidextrous uh, safety as you would see right here the trigger finger is blocked off from the, all the other fingers with this plastic piece here some people like that some people do not there is a little gap right here uh, right under the trigger that has been a little bit annoying for me but that's just me mainly because if you are using it with gloves or whatnot sometimes you'll see it gets stuck in there right you can imagine uh, but like i said that's just me some people probably will not have that problem okay um other than that on this part that's what's really going on here there is a fall arrest type system back here if you did want to hook some kind of lanyard or other fall arrest type system on there and this part right here is a viewing window for the battery uh, fuel gauge right so let's we take this battery in here and we you know hit the button you can actually see the life uh, battery life fuel gauge uh, through there without having to pull the battery out so that is a nice touch there I'm moving on to the back side here. This part here, pretty standard. Like I said, same grip. This is exactly where the blade wrench is stored. No need to take it out. It hasn't fallen out by any means, but take it out, use it there. This right here is the rafter hook. It is a single position rafter hook. And you could, you would think that it's easy to kind of get on, uh, let's say four by fours or three and a half inch, you know, dimensional lumber. Um, I, I always feel like it's a struggle to get on a four by four. I haven't successfully gotten it on there, but you know, I just ended up just putting it on the ground. Uh, for a two by four material, it works works just fine. Um, don't really have any issues with this. It just seems like it's probably in the right place. Sometimes I feel like um, if you put a big heavy battery in here, like the 10 amp hour battery or the 8 amp hour battery, it almost feels like it's unbalanced depending on how and where you're hanging and you may need to like rest the top against something, but you know, that's what it is. Uh, this part right here is obviously the top handle. If you do use the, you know, circular saw like this, this is pretty stiff, although it is plastic. Don't really have too many issues, you know, concerns about this. Although I will kind of question if this were to fall off the roof or whatnot and land on concrete here this would probably break just wanted to point that out uh, moving on to the front here so this right here is the uh, spindle lock obviously if you were to use it to you know change the blade which you would have to and this right here is the front facing dust port and i have two issues with this port okay one it's great that it's here but the first issue is it does not swivel all the way, right? So swivels, you can shoot it down or you can kind of shoot it moving forward almost at like a 45 degrees. Uh, both of them are really bad angles, uh, in my opinion, mainly because if you are cutting forward, right? Let's imagine almost everybody cuts forward. Uh, Sometimes you'll cut backwards, but you know, uh, cutting forward, you, the hose, you're pushing against the hose, right? Sure, you get a flexible hose and kind of go off like this, but it's just really always strangely in a very awkward angle, okay? So if you do also press it downwards, that means your hose is a lot of times for most people's uh, dust collection, they're like, you know, nozzle tip or whatnot, it's gonna be more strained right here and it kind of gets in the way. So I have tried it with two different uh, dust collection port hoses. Uh, one, I have a, a Bosch one that you know, you take a couple adapters and fit it on here. And that part always seems to be getting caught this way. And then it gets seemed to caught under here, which is a different problem. And then with the uh, uh, dust right, what is it? I forgot what brand is. Let's call it the uh, dust right uh, one from Rockler that I was using earlier. You probably see in some of the videos. Um, it just always seems to be getting in the way. So either they need to make this go, you know, let's say straight out, or, you know, they need to make it swivel more such that you can kind of point it upwards like this, right? So this, that's, you know, issue number one. Issue number two is that it is not a standard size, meaning none of the uh, dust collection hose ports or whatnot I have fit uh, by default tightly on here. You've probably seen in the video, I was using the dust right uh, collector hose uh, from Rockler, but I had it like zip tie tight on here. So it ends up, I forgot what it was, I'm gonna have to go double check the measurement, but I think it's somewhere around like one and like three eighths or something like that. It's a really awkward size, uh, so it doesn't really fit perfectly. Like I said, um, kind of almost have that same issue with the Makita uh, parts or whatnot, but you know, I'm just saying, two main issues. All right, so uh, before we forget, there is an LED light right here. If you did want to see what the LED light looks like, here we go. 
it does work right there and right along here they also do say that it blows the dust out um, i think on their general usage cutting slow and trying to get a good quality cut it will kind of help a little bit um, but when you're just doing fast cuts like that you're probably not going to really be able to tell a difference okay so uh, moving on to the front here, this right here is their bevel system. This right here is a single level level uh, bevel adjustment. They do have positive stops here, as you would imagine. They generally followed what I could tell is the Makita design, where it kind of has you know the positive stops for 22.5. You press it in to do the adjustment, then it goes to 45. Then you press it here, and it goes to about 56. I haven't used it on 56 yet, but you know 45 is usually the most common place where you put it. So you put it there, make sure it's unlocked, then you can generally bevel it pretty easily all right so it stops there just like that move it back um, go there it'll go just a little bit more uh, one thing that's happening right now which I'm showing you is that not a, by purpose but you know once it does go back at this lever if you don't have it like locked in or whatnot sometimes it gets annoying to bring it backwards because it kind of gets stuck here and it's happened to me I want to say almost every time I try to do a quick bevel right so you do the bevel you try to come back it's stuck here you sometimes you have to just you know hold it and put that down yes I'm just knickknacking and picking out certain things but you know just if you just use it a lot, there's just certain things that you know you just see that kind of annoys you a little bit. Uh, but anyways, this part right here is where the rip fence would go. You do not get the wing bolt. You do have to buy that one separately. I would probably believe that they would include that when you buy the rip fence, right? So uh, on the bottom here, you know, nothing too fancy going on here. It's just standard shoe plate here. Um, the sight lines are actually pretty good, I would say, especially if you are a right-handed person using a rear handle circular saw, mainly because you're gonna be, your body is gonna be on the left side. So when you're using it, you're gonna have pretty good sight lines right here, okay? And they kind of went with the triangular design where you can kind of see if you do draw a line or some kind of chalk line, where you are and kind of how you need to adjust depending on uh, you know how far in and off you are, okay? So, uh, one more thing I did want to point out, let's see if it comes out pretty well here. But if you look on this side right here, um, in here are little black uh, plastic pieces. It's not rubberized by any means, but they are spring loaded. So the main reason I'm pointing that out is because when you put the battery in there, right, let's say this battery, these two uh, parts on the battery will line up here and kind of press the spring down, okay? Uh, I'm not sure if it serves a safety purpose, but it does kind of help the, the battery to kind of stay in there and not vibrate around too much. So this battery sits in there pretty tightly, okay? And you would think that it kind of should help with um, auto ejecting, as you can see right there. It kind of did. Let's go ahead and show you that again real quick. If I press this right here, let's see how, how it helps ejects. There you go, look at that. So it is in there mainly because, you know, some of these batteries are pretty heavy, all right? So now let's go into some testing because that's what everybody really wants to see.
or I hope you all caught those numbers because those numbers went by really fast, all right? And just in case you didn't, we're gonna recap them anyways, but bear with me here because we're gonna throw a lot of numbers at you, a lot of data, and then we're gonna go recap it all at the end, all right? So uh, stick with me and forgive me if we're talking too fast, but you know, if you wanna slow it down, that's fine too. Here is a five amp hour battery. We tested this tool in the five amp hour battery. First run on the triple stack test, 11.13. Second run, 9.28. Third run, 9.95. Average, 10.12. Um, double stack test 7.25 7.90 and 6.93 average 7.36 and as you saw in the videos or clips i hope you saw them um, it was kind of challenging to get all the cuts in with that because it just kept stalling a lot with the five amp hour battery okay so now let's move on to the eight amp hour cylindrical cell battery right uh first run on the triple stack performance test 5.10 second run uh, 5.17 5.15, average 5.14. Well, really tight groupings there. Uh, on the double stack performance test, uh, 3.92, 3.92, 3.95. even tighter groupings. Uh, their, uh, average comes out to 3.93 seconds, all right? Then we moved on to the stack lithium batteries, six uh, amp hour stack lithium battery. Uh, triple stack performance test, first run, 3.55, 3.78, 3.78, average 3.70 on the double stack performance test 2.80 uh, 2.85 2.80 average 2.82 pretty tight groupings pretty good pretty pretty interesting all right uh, on the 10 amp hour stack lithium battery right with a 10 amp hour stack lithium battery uh, triple stack uh, performance test first run 3.42 3.88 3.42 average 3.57 uh, double stack performance test, uh, 2.87, 2.97, 2.95, average 2.93. So let's go take a look at what it weighs before we go look at the total performance numbers, right? So with the 10 amp hour stack lithium uh, battery, it weighs 13.55 pounds, you know, with the tool configuration. With the 6 amp hour, it weighs 12.45. With the 8 amp hour, 13.22. And the 5 amp hour comes in weighing in a whopping 12.45 pounds, okay? So what you really wanna take away from that is no matter which battery you use, this is just a heavy tool, okay? Um, so now let's go take a look at the total performance numbers, okay? How do we get that? We take the sum of the averages, starting with the five. The five amp hour total performance number comes out to 17.48 seconds. Bam, that puts it in 29th place, which is not very high on the leaderboard, but let's see what's right in front and behind um, this tool on the leaderboard. In front of it is a uh, Milwaukee 2830-20, uh, which is the M18 fuel. Um, using a five amp hour battery. And this is just in front of the DCS 573, which is the 20 volt max flex volt advantage tool using a five amp hour battery. So it kind of seems like it's exactly where it should be, right? So moving, uh, looking at the eight amp hour uh, battery, right? Uh, total performance number comes out to 9.07 seconds, putting that in 14th place, right? That's a big difference between this uh, five and the eight, right? 14th place. So the 14th place, let's go take a look. That's right behind the Milwaukee 2732, which is the M18 fuel Sidewinder uh, saw using a six amp hour high output battery and just in front of the Makita GSH-02, which is the, their 40 volt XGT model using a four amp hour battery, okay? So it seems almost, you know, you would probably think that it should be somewhere around there, but you know, it seems to be where you would expect it. So now the big questions, where does it stand with the six amp hour stack lithium test? Uh, six amp hour stack lithium battery, total performance score number comes up to 6.52 seconds. Bam, that puts it right in second place right now, right behind the DCS-577, uh, which is Dewalt Flex Volt, a rear handle circular saw using their nine amp hour 20 volt max battery, AKA three amp hour Flex Volt battery, right? Um, which is, you know, just right behind there. Um, and, you know, just in front of the Makita GSR-01, which is the Makita 40 volt XGT rear handle saw, right? Which had a total performance score of 6.76, all right? Uh, then the question everybody really wants to know, can it take first place with the 10 amp hour stack lithium battery, right? Let's go take a look. With a 10 amp hour stack lithium battery, the total performance number comes out to 6.50 seconds. Where does that put it? Bam, second place, knocking off the six amp hour, just down one, right? So, um, it is just only second to uh, the DCS-577, like I said, the Flexvolt uh, rear handle circular saw using a three amp hour Flexvolt battery. 
um, and also just in front of the Makita uh, GSR-01, which is their XGT rear handle battery, right? But let's go take a look at the first few numbers there, right? DeWalt has 6.31, this one has 6.50, 6.52, and the Makita has 6.76. I mean, they're all six point something, right? If you really wanna say they're all within the margin of error, you could argue that, right? But if you really wanna come down to the bare numbers, um, that's how it really stacks up. So they're all pretty much right at the top, right? There's always room for you know error and stuff like that there. So let's go ahead and throw up all the flex ones on the screen and then we'll talk about that, right? So with the flex five amp hour battery, um, it's 17.5 and then you move to the eight amp hour battery, which is 9.07. That is a huge difference. You do not wanna be using this tool with the five amp hour battery because as you probably saw in the videos, it's just gonna be cutting out all the time. Any little amount of pressure that you apply, I felt that it was just stalling. So just trying to get three cuts you know, in there was actually quite a challenge because you know, we felt like we were just pushing too hard. We wanted to get the fastest cuts that we possibly can with the tool, all right? So, uh, 8 amp hour battery, like I said, 9.07, but moving on to the 6, which is 6.52, it's almost about two seconds of, of uh, a difference there. Um, and then moving on to the 10 amp hour, you know, comes out to about 6.5. So a pretty sizable difference between the 8 and the 6 uh, stack lithium, or the 8 cylindrical and the 6 stack lithium, you know, about two seconds, but not too much of a difference between the 6 and the 10, at least in terms of cutting speed except for, let's call it the triple stack performance test, right? If you look at the triple stack test, the uh, main difference there was with the 10 amp hour came out to 3.57 average and uh, six amp hour stack lithium 3.7, right? So with uh, more tougher, deeper cuts or whatnot, um, the, there is a you know pretty good difference there. So you know the more powerful batteries you put on there, the faster it will cut as you would imagine, all right? No secret sauce there. So um, let's go just, you know, wrap this up since we got a lot of stuff going in on here. So what can we say about this tool? This obviously is a great tool. Um, you know, one of the first things I said when I picked up and made the first color is, wow, this thing feels nice and powerful. This is probably one of the most powerful refined tools, if that, if that even makes sense. Uh, let me see if I can explain that. So if I use the Dual DCS577, the uh, FlexVolt, uh, 60 volt max saw using anything. I'm just, just using it, bam, it just feels like it's raw power. Even some of the uh, Milwaukee stuff, sometimes you're using, it just feels like torquey, if that even makes sense. Um, but it doesn't really feel like, you know, nice or refined. Also, I think the Milwaukee even spins slower. But anyways, um, it just feels, you know, like raw power. This one actually feels like refined power. They've taken that and done something to it, you know, to make it feel like, you know, they've tamed it or refined it somehow. But it does not also, it just doesn't feel necessarily like a, you know, well refined machine, right? Something like you, you would pick up the Metabo HBT or even the Makita XGT thinking, wow, this saw just feels really nice. I don't know what it is about it. It just feels like, you know, I'm sure they've spent all of these companies have spent all their engineering hours and trying to figure all that stuff out. But for some reason, the, you know, the XGT and the Metabo HPT just feel really nice. And for that reason, for some reason, I'm always just reaching for that Metabo HPT tool because, you know, it is not the fastest cutting tool, but it's probably one of the most enjoyable using tools or the best user experiences if it makes sense. It just feels nice, right? But like I said, there's nothing wrong with this tool except for, like I said, two things with this dust port. Let's talk about that. Um, so the main reason that this dust port is here, and I'm actually forget about the main reason it's here, but uh, there's two part, parts where you can uh, put a dust port, right? A lot of the companies will put their dust port right here. Um, there is a good benefit to that. I actually prefer the dust port being there if I'm using it inside mainly because you can connect the hose to it and it's not always in the way. As I mentioned earlier, if you put the dust port here, the hose is always in the way, right? For dust collection purposes. So um, it doesn't really make too much sense depending on, you know, uh, where you want to use a tool. Sorry, I'm just kind of confusing that. So if you want to use the tool with a dust collector hose attached to it, you probably want to put it here. But if you want to use a tool without the dust collection attached to it, you, you actually probably want that here, mainly because here you can point the dust away from you, like either this way or downwards or whatever. Whereas here, if you're using it without dust collection, it's just going to be pointing like putting it all in your face or all in your clothes or hand or whatever, right? So it actually makes sense for them to put it here. I just have an issue with the size and about, you know, how much it rotates, but you know, that's just me. Anyways, um, what can we say about this tool? It's a great tool. Um, would I go out and buy this tool again? Probably not. This tool was part, probably pretty expensive. This tool was expensive. It was whopping $400 as a kit and you get this, 
the, the battery and the charger and stuff like that. And I just don't find myself trying to use this tool all the time. I think it's great to have because it is a very powerful tool. And like I said, not too many things are nothing really wrong with the tool. It's a great tool. And you know, if you want a rear handle circle saw and you're in the flex platform, or you just want a really powerful saw, go buy it, you know? Um, if you if you don't really care about the power and you just you know want a nice tool then you know and you're not in the flex platform don't buy it you know uh, I'm just here to give you numbers right so numbers are on the screen um, up, and you can make decisions whatever you want for yourself but would I go out and buy this tool again probably not okay um, who knows maybe one day I'll just end up eating those words and you know because Flex does seem to be putting out more and more tools and more and more, uh, you know, batteries and stuff like that. So that's what it is. Anyways, long story short, let's close it out. Um, this is a great tool. If you want it, buy it. If you don't want it, don't buy it. It's expensive. It's a powerful tool. Not the fastest. Probably one of the most powerful in terms of what it feels like. But... Um, that's what it is. Like I said, I um, hope this video has helped you guys out. If you have any questions or anything else, let me know. Sorry, there was a long video. We had to test a lot of stuff and all these batteries, snub numbers and stuff like that. I had to make a ton of cuts. So I uh, hope this video has helped you guys out. If you have any questions or anything else, let me know. Um, if you don't, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day. Do some good work and we'll see you guys next time.